There are several processes occur in nature, but whose reverse do not. Example, glass breaks spontaneously when dropped to the floor. The potential energy of the glass changes to kinetic energy as the glass fall. When it hits the ground, this energy is transformed into internal energy of the glass and the floor. But they don't go back together spontaneously. The word spontaneously means that a process occurs without any input of work done. In this case, energy would still be conserved, but we never see the reverse scenario happens. The first law of thermodynamics still applies if the reverse process occurs, however the first law cannot explain why the reverse process won't happen. Scientists in the 19th formulated a new principle known as the second law of thermodynamics. This law tells which processes occurs in nature and which do not. As an introduction, according to Clausius, the second law states that heat can flow spontaneously from a hot object to a cold object. The concept developed and was based partly on the study of heat engines. And to be discussed in my next video. Thank you for watching. It is easy to produce thermal energy by doing work, simply by rubbing your hands together, in cold stormy weather. But how about the reverse? Producing work out from thermal energy. A practical device to do this was invented about 1700, with the development of steam engine. This invention was applied further by using it for transportation, like trains and ships. Basically, a heat engine can only convert thermal energy to mechanical energy, if there is temperature difference between the system. That is, when heat is allowed to flow, from higher to lower temperature. In physics terms, a certain amount of heat at higher temperature is partly transformed into work, and partly exhausted or released as heat at lower temperature, represented by this simple formula. Higher temperature and lower temperatures are called operating temperatures of the engine. Take note of the sign convention. This is a simple application of physics theories. I hope you learn from this video. And if you're still younger, perhaps you acquire some inspiration to pursue science or engineering course someday. Thank you for watching. Efficiency of engines, specifically car engines, is very important for energy security and climate protection goals. Researches are conducted in order to improve car efficiencies that would result less impact to the environment, as well as saving energy sources. In this video we will deal with the fundamental definition of efficiency, and apply basic principle to solve car efficiency problem. The efficiency of any heat engine is the ratio of work it does, to the heat input at high temperature, denoted by this formula. For heat engines, work is converted from thermal energy as heat at higher temperature, heat is equal to work plus some heat exhausted at lower temperature. Using this formula, substitute to the definition of efficiency, and by simple manipulation, we came up with this equation. Consider this example. Dom's car engine has an efficiency of 20%, and produces 23 kJ of work during per second operation. How much heat input is required, and the heat discharge is heat. Using this equation heat input is 115 kJ, while the engine discharges 92 kJ heat per second to the environment. It was studied how to increase efficiency in engines, and it was started by the scientist Sadi Carnot, who examined the characteristics of an ideal engine, called Carnot engine. His study played important role in the development of thermodynamics. Carnot engine undergo four processes, which are two adiabatic cycles and two isothermal cycles. This is a theoretical idea, meaning, assumptions are made to came up with applicable ideas for real engines. To illustrate the Carnot cycle, first the gas is expanded isothermally, with addition of heat, along with this path. Next, the gas expand adiabatically, where no heat is exchanged, but the temperature drop at lower temperature. The gas is then compressed at constant temperature, within this path. There is heat exhausted in this process. And finally, the gas compress adiabatically with this path back to original state. The ideal concept states that the heats are proportional to operating temperatures represented by this equation that is used to calculate engine efficiency. The second law of thermodynamics can also be stated in terms of entropy, introduced by Clausius in 1860s. Entropy is a state function of a given system. Take note that a state function does not depend on the path of a given process of a system. It is only dependent on the final and initial quantity. That's why a state function is represented with the symbol delta, meaning change, final minus initial. In this video, we will discuss the change entropy during a process of a system is equal to the amount of heat added to a system by a reversible process at constant temperature given by this equation. Temperature is in Kelvin. To show, here's an example. An ice cube of mass 56 grams is taken from a storage compartment at 0 degrees Celsius and placed in a paper cup. After few minutes, the ice cube melt at 0 degrees Celsius. The change in entropy is just equal to heat divided by temperature. In this instance, heat is equal to mass times latent heat of fusion L, given in tables.
To understand entropy, we can relate it to a more ordinary concept of order to disorder. Entropy is actually a measure of the disorder of a system. The general statement of the second law of thermodynamics is that natural processes tend to move toward a state of greater disorder. Therefore, entropy increases in every spontaneous process. To illustrate this concept, one example is physical change of an ice to water, then from water to vapor or gas. An ice cube from a freezer melts to liquid water spontaneously, without even doing something with the ice. Entropy increases because the solid ice is consists of tightly held molecule, changes to liquid water, which has slightly free molecules to move around. After several hours, this liquid then vaporized due to heat present in the surrounding, and its vapor pressure becomes equal with surroundings vapor pressure after some time. Comparing the motion of molecules, gas molecules moves freely than liquid. Thus, this water vapor is much higher in entropy, or highly disordered than liquid. Most processes occurring in nature end up with thermal energy that is not useful anymore to do work. Energy is always conserved, no amount of energy is lost. However, some energy released to the surrounding is impossible to do useful work. As time goes on energy is degraded, in a sense that it is from a more orderly form, such as mechanical energy, to a least orderly form, such as thermal energy. This leads to the prediction that the universe will approach a state of maximum disorder. Matter will become a uniform mixture, heat will have flowed from higher to lower temperature regions, until the universe is at one temperature, meaning, no work can be done. There would be no thermodynamic free energy and would therefore be unable to sustain processes that increase entropy. All energy will become degraded to thermal energy, and all change will cease. This prediction is called the heat death of the universe, also known as the big chill or big freeze, discussed by philosophers. This final state would be an inevitable consequence of the second law of thermodynamics, and the ultimate fate of the universe, though this lie very far in the future. Growth and evolution are both example of increasing entropy, that is, increasing disorder. Growth is a naturally occurring process and is expected to take place in increasing entropy, according to the second law of thermodynamics. As well as the theory of evolution, from a single-celled organism to a highly ordered organism, but consists of complex molecules. This follows the second law of thermodynamics. In the process of evolution and growth, and even the mature life of an individual, it undergo metabolism processes that eliminate waste products, and retain molecules that are less ordered. Thus, entropy increases. Entropy also tells us in which direction processes go. Seeing a film that is run backward, you can undoubtedly tell that it was run backward. Such as a torn balloon suddenly becoming whole again and filled with air. That thing won't happen in real life. It is a process that decrease entropy, that is, order increases, it violates the second law of thermodynamics. In contrast, natural processes occur with increasing entropy. Entropy is called the time's arrow, for it can tell us which direction time is going. Every day, people utilize energy from vehicles, to electricity produced by power plants that use heat engines. Heat engines give off exhaust heat, and this is absorbed by the environment, in waters, lakes, river, and air. This is referred to as thermal pollution. This heat alters the natural ecology of aquatic life, it increases water temperature, and thus water holds less oxygen. The heat output also raises the temperature in the atmosphere which affects the weather. One big problem the Earth is facing is the buildup of carbon dioxide due to burning of fossil fuels in cars, power plants, and industrial furnaces. Carbon dioxide absorbs infrared radiation that Earth naturally emits, resulting to global warming. Thermal pollution is unavoidable, since people need that energy in everyday life. The second law of thermodynamics tells us the limitation enacted by nature. Engineers can try to design and build engines with greater efficiency. In addition, the best thing people can do is use less energy, and conserve fuel resources. 